normal armors are usually rare to witness on the battlefield, but when they do fight, they are sure to occupy a massive presence. In general, for any Gundam universe, mobile armors are significantly larger, faster, and more heavily armed than the traditional mobile suits. Basically, these are the boss fights that would take up entire episodes. To take these machines out, a large amount of firepower and effort is required. This list covers the top 10 mobile armors across the Gundam universe. Enjoy! Coming in at number 10 is the M805 Burgo, a mobile armor used by Xeon Space Force in Universal Century. Don't be fooled by its relatively small size. This mean green machine is armed with a mega particle cannon, four tube missile launchers, claw arms, and even a Gatling gun. Unfortunately for Xeon, due to its late entry into the war and extremely costly price tag, only 14 were ever produced. Number 9 is none other than the NZ-333 Alpha Zero, a powerful new type mobile armor featured in Char's counterattack. This machine is an experimental mobile armor developed by Neo Xeon New Type Research Labs and, at the time, one of the largest and most powerful mobile weapons ever to be developed. Its overall head height is almost 60 meters, which is three times taller than that of the RX-78. With great size comes great power. This machine is armed with four Vulcan guns, twin large Vulcan guns, folding claw arms, mega particle gun in the head and chest, and mega arm cannons. Sitting in at number 8 has the name of someone who is typically your gym partner, the MAN-03 Bra Bro, or how I like to say, Bra Bro! <laughs> Suiting something that has the name of a modern day bodybuilder, this machine is 2,602 tons behemoth, armed with a two barrel mega particle gun, wired mega gun particle guns, and even separating body system, the Bra Bro! Could have been forced to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, all three models were destroyed during the One Year War. Number 7 is a special addition to this list. Although not technically counted as a mobile armor, and instead as a mobile weapon, the RX-78 GP-03 Gundam Dendrobium was specifically designed using mobile armor technology. The Earth Federation forces needed a weapon for territorial defense in space, which would only require few in number, but also require massive firepower. To meet this, the GP-03 is armed with battleship-grade mega particle cannons, 108 tube micro missile pods, and another 83 tube micro missile pods, three large tube missile pods, a demolition chain, and even a folding bazooka. Number six is one of my personal favorites, the AMX-002 Neo Zeal. This machine was featured in Mobile Suit Gundam Stardust Memory and was piloted by none other than the Nightmare of Solomon Annabelle Gatto. The mobile armor was given to the Delaz fleet by Xeon Remnants and Axis Xeon. The AMX-002 is pretty much Usain Bolt and the Hulk smashed together. The Zeal is incredibly fast, maneuverable, and almost invincible because of an eye field. The large thrusters make this machine incredibly mobile, and the Mega R particle cannons throughout its body gives the pilot an all-range, multi-directional attack. Although this machine was nearly unstoppable, it was destroyed in Gato's kamikaze attack against the Federation. Number 5 is the Hashmol, featured in the ever-popular Iron-Blooded Orphan series. This unmanned mobile armor is one of countless mobile armors that took the lives of a quarter of the world's population during the Calamity War. This machine was specifically designed with an artificial intelligence to hunt and slaughter humans. This pterodactyl-like machine is agile and very deadly. Its claws, head mountain beam cannon, hardwired blade, and small support units known as Pluma definitely earns this model in our top 10 list. Number 4 is the Aptalus 3 from Mobile Suit Gundam the 08th MS Team. This flying fortress of Gaines was mobilized by Xeon after their loss at Operation Odessa. Although production of the Absolus was ordered to be halted, the creator, Genius Sahalin, finished her project and took it to the skies. The most notable weapon on this model is the incredibly large mega particle gun cannon in the center. In addition, the Minovsky craft system made this model one of Xeon's few weapons with aerial navigation under Earth's damn dirty gravity. If you've seen Gundam Unicorn, then you probably have a good idea for the next mobile armor. Number 3 is none other than the AMA X7 Chamblot. 
This walking temple of doom is a Neo Zeon amphibious prototype mobile armor capable of engaging units in the sea, on the land, and in the air. As seen in this series, this model has three different propulsion systems and comes fully armed with a mega particle diffusion gun, quad missile launchers, triple claw with anti-beam coating, reflector bits, and an eye field barrier. The ferocity of the Shamblo wreaked havoc on Earth Federation capital, the car. Number 2 on this list is the MA-06 Val Walo from Gundam Stardust Memory. This machine is basically the angrier cousin of the MA-05 Burgo. Although this machine draws strong influences from the Burgo, it is more heavily armed with greater improvements in speed and maneuverability. This machine sports a large mega particle cannon, two tube missile pods, anti-aircraft guns, Vulcan guns, pincers, and plasma weapons. As with the Burgo, only three units were produced during the One Year War. Due to its very late entry, units only saw combat at the Battle of al Baku, with surviving units witnessed in Stardust memory. And finally, number one on our list is an instant classic. This machine was one of the biggest and most powerful mobile armor ever developed by the Principality of Xeon. Its firepower legendary, its physical structure pissed off looking, its armaments Oh hey, it's Big Zam. If you ever thought about putting legs on a mobile armor so that it can float in space, I can assure you that it's not a bad idea. The designers for Big Zam completely disregarded the concept of high speed and mobility, a concept quite opposite to mobile suit designs. What the Big Zam lacks in speed and mobility, it makes up for it for its offensive and defensive capabilities. Large mega particle gun, anti-aircraft mega guns, missiles, Vulcan guns, I fear barrier generator, and a pair of legs to drop kick battleships. But seriously, the Big Zam represents a shift in Xeon's strategy of the One Year War, diverting attention away from mobile suits and instead focusing on mobile armors of immense size and firepower to overwhelm Federation forces. Of course this didn't work, and it was too late. The Big Zam was even defeated by Ray Amaro, and Xeon's defeat was all but sealed. And that's all I have for this video. Share your thoughts on your favorite mobile armors. Do you have a model that wasn't mentioned in the list? Let me know. That's all I have. Thanks for watching and keep your eyes out for the next video. Peace out.